With his career spanning over 78 years, Pablo Picasso is known as the world's most prolific painter. He lived a very long, productive life from 1881 until 1973. During that time, he created 13,500 paintings, 100,000 prints and engravings, and 34,000 illustrations used in books. He also made 300 sculptures and ceramic pieces. His impact on the development of modern and contemporary art is unparalleled. Picasso claimed more influence from Iberian sources and denounced influence from African sculpture, but there's evidence that he was heavily into African art at that time and even had procured a personal collection. How much was Picasso actually influenced by African art? In the early 1900s, there was a climate of African interest in Europe. Africa was the recipient of the French Empire's expansion, and African artifacts were showing up in museums. Exotic tales from Africa were exaggerated in the press. European avant-garde artists were heavily influenced by traditional African sculpture. Picasso and others in France began combining African sculpture's highly stylized treatment of the human figure with post-impressionist painting styles derived from the works of Edward Manet, Paul Cézanne, and Paul Gauguin. The result was a kind of pictorial flatness, a vivid color palette, and fragmented cubist shapes. This style was helpful in defining cubism and modern art. Unaware of the function and significance of the African sculptures they came into contact with, these artists recognized the spiritual aspects of the artifacts, integrating these qualities into their own art. This allowed them an avenue in which to break free from the standards of naturalism that had defined Western art since the Renaissance. Picasso's African-influenced period lasted from around 1907 until 1909. During this time, he began to incorporate African influences into his work. This era of his work was called the Black Period. In Paris, France, between June and July of 1907, Picasso created one of the most influential paintings of modern art, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. It is roughly an eight-foot square oil on canvas painting. Demoiselles presents five naked women set in a brothel. Avignon is a reference to a street in Barcelona known for its brothels. Picasso abandoned conventionally accepted forms of representation of traditional art during the making of this painting. In Demoiselles, Picasso distorted the female body and geometric forms in an innovative way, which challenged the expectation of idealized representation of the female body in painting. The figures have faces made of flat, fragmented planes and inspired by Iberian sculpture and African masks. Everything is jagged and sharp. There is no reference to soft, round curves, as is usually attached to the female form. Two of the women in the painting stand, staring penetratingly at the viewer, flaunting their breasts. The other three are masked. One in profile to the left appears to be wearing a brown, kind of fleshy, wooden mask. The faces of the three women on the left are based on Iberian sculptures, where the two women to the right have faces inspired by African masks. Their eyes are displaced, and they all stare at the viewer, seemingly unaware of each other, even detached from one another and their setting. There is a contrast of styles in this painting that seems to enhance the power of their gaze. This reversed gaze, coupled with the idea of the self-possessed woman, take them out of the role of being there merely for the male gaze. The space behind the figures appears to project forward in jagged shards. A bowl of fruit is displayed from a top-down perspective, as the table it sits on is shown in a straightforward manner, displaying a rejection of fixed perspective. The painting took over nine months to complete. It was initially regarded as immoral when it was first exhibited in 1916. After Demoiselles, Picasso painted in a mode influenced by the two figures on the right of the painting, the two figures based on African art. Gribo and Nimba masks from his collection of African sculpture influenced some of his primary early sculptures. For decades after, his work continued to display African aesthetics.